Hello and welcome. This is Pre-Uni New College. This video is intended to provide information about thinking skills and how to solve these questions through logical steps. These logical explanations and solutions will be beneficial. However, please be advised it does not give all the answers to solving the thinking skills questions. Most importantly, consistent study and reading are essential for successful outcomes. Pre-Uni New College has always taught logic to students and this video is intended to guide and benefit you. This video and guideline about thinking skills is not intended as a shortcut to understand the logic. Students must study consistently to achieve successful results. Let's begin. Welcome to part five of an explanation of different logic questions that you may encounter. In this part, we will be looking at categorical logic. Categorical logic is when we obtain a complete claim by stating a relationship between the categories of things. For example, if we have a set of claims, all koalas are endangered, Kogi is a koala, we can therefore conclude that Kogi is endangered. We can express these as symbols where K represents the category of koalas and E represents the category of all things that are endangered. Since we know that all K are E, X is a K, we can therefore claim that X is an E. We can represent this set of claims in a diagram. The endangered category contains the koalas category. A subset is a group where everything is contained completely within another group. We can therefore say that the koalas category is a subset of the endangered category. Here is another example that depicts the statement. Everyone who likes maths likes English. We cannot go the other way around and say that everyone who likes English likes maths. Here is a list of all the possible categorical claims you may come across. 1. All PRC. 2. Some PRC. 3. No PRC. 4. All P are not C. 5. Some P are not C. And 6. No P are not C. We'll first discuss all P are C statements, saying all P are C is the same as saying P are C. For example, saying all koalas are endangered is the same as saying koalas are endangered. Where it is implied in the second one that we are talking about all koalas. The Venn diagram shows this relationship where P represents the koalas and C represents endangered. The contradictory of this statement is some koalas are endangered. Some may think that no koalas are endangered is the contradictory, but both these statements can be false at the same time if half the koalas are endangered and the other half are not endangered. Next, we'll talk about only PSC statements, saying only PSC is the same as saying all CRP. For example, saying only people who eat ice cream eat cake is the same as saying all people who eat ice cream eat cake. The Venn diagram shows this relationship where P represents people who eat ice cream and C represents people who eat cake. The contradictory of this statement is some people who eat cake do not eat ice cream. Now let's go through some PSC statements. Saying some PSC is the same as saying at least one P is a C. Note that it can mean all PSC. Consider the statement some computers are slow. The Venn diagram shows this relationship where P represents computers and C represents slow. The contradictory of this statement is no computers are slow. Let's look at a couple of uh, the examples. In a survey of television viewers, everyone who liked volleyball likes skiing. Everyone who likes skiing likes cycling, but no one who likes skiing likes gymnastics. Darren, Amanda, Lee and Jess all took part in the survey. Based on the above information, which one of the following must be true? A. If Darren likes cycling, he also likes skiing. B. If Amanda does not like gymnastics, she does not like cycling. C. If Lee does not like volleyball, he does not like skiing. 
Or D, if Jess likes volleyball, she does not like gymnastics. What do you think the answer is? Using the information in the question, we can draw the following Venn diagram. Volleyball is a subset of skiing. Skiing is a subset of cycling, which means that both volleyball and skiing are subsets of cycling. No one who likes skiing likes gymnastics, which means no one who likes volleyball or skiing can like gymnastics either. Therefore, the only possible answer is if Jess likes volleyball, she does not like gymnastics. Here's another example. Brooke and Joyce wanted to find out the most popular traditional game at their school. Bulajini, Buroinjin, Kulchi, or Kintan. They did a survey of all the students at the school and found the following. Everyone who liked Wulijini also liked Kulchi. Some people both liked Buroinjin and Kulchi. No one liked both Buroinjin and Wulijini. There were more people who only liked Kulchi than people who only liked Buroinjin. All the Kingten fans were also fans of Wulunjini. What was the most popular game? Wulunjini, Kulchi, Buroinjin or Kingten? Using the information in the question, we can draw the following Venn diagram. Kingten fans were also Wulunjini fans, which means they can be represented by the same circle. Wulunjini in Kingten is a subset of Kulchi. Buroinjin's circle doesn't touch Wulunjini in Kingten's circle, but can overlap with Kulchi's circle. Kulchi's circle is larger than Buroinjin because there are more fans. Therefore, the most popular game is Kulchi. Here's another example. There were three subjects, maths, computing, and physics. Everyone who passed maths also passed computing. Anyone who passed physics then passed at least one more subject. No one passed all three subjects and no one failed all three. Which scenario is not possible? A, no one passed both physics and maths? Or B, someone passed both physics and computing? Or is it C, someone passed both maths and physics? And D, someone passed only maths? Let's separate the information and draw a Venn diagram. Everyone who passed maths also passed computing. And anyone who passed physics passed at least one more subject. And no one passed three subjects and no one failed all three. From this information, we can deduce that maths is a subset of computing. Since everyone who passed physics passed at least one other subject, and no one passed all three subjects, everyone who passed physics also passed computing. Therefore, the only scenario not possible is someone passed only maths, since everyone who passed maths also passed computing. I hope that made sense. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it has helped you understand a bit about thinking skills and the logic needed to solve these questions. Please note, as stated in the beginning of the video, studying and reading consistently are essential for successful outcomes. Take care. Goodbye.